hello good evening and once again we're here to have our church school or Sunday school lesson and I'm so glad to have you join me on tonight as we get ready to start our lesson let me see if there's someone who's out there watching with me okay looks like nobody's there but I'll give it a few minutes now uh, as before we get started as I always like to ask God to bless us as we study this lesson because it's not about us but it's about him so let us pray first mm -hmm. dear Lord here we are thanking you Lord for this opportunity thank you Lord for allowing us to see another day and allowing us to be in our right mind we thank you, Lord, because we know without you, this would not be possible. Now, Lord, as we prepare ourselves to talk about your word in this lesson, Lord, we ask that you give us all listening ears and receiving heart so that something might be said that will benefit someone who's listening, Lord. Lord, we don't want to do this in our own stead, but we want to stand and represent you and your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you again, Lord. Now, Lord, as we go into this lesson, I want to ask a special blessing upon the sick and the bereaved everywhere, Lord, even those behind prison bars, Lord. Forgive us and bless and keep us all, and we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, who I got here? Oh, oh, Renee, so spicy. Good to see you, little sister. Margaret Walker, good to see you. So I do have two that I see are out there. I'm sure somebody else, but we're going to give them. We're going to go on, and they are joining with us. There's Jackie Smith. Good to see you, Jackie. Uh, we have a great lesson today. Uh, we've studied this before about uh, Saul. And when I began to read this lesson, when I first opened it up, I was, I was under the impression that it was mostly talking about Saul. But the main character, it, is, it does involve Saul. Hello, Clint. How you doing? Sister King, good to have you. Brenda King. Um, it's more about Ananias. And we will get into this and see. Hello, Sister Cummins and uh, Aurora. Good to have you. And anybody else that I don't seem to see, but I'm glad to see, I recognize and see some people that I know, so I'm glad to have you. In our lesson, as I was saying, it, our lesson is talking about Ananias and Saul. But as I did a little research, uh, Sister Roberts, I realized that the name Ananias appears three times in the New Testament, and it doesn't appear anywhere else. The first Ananias, was about Ananias and Sapphira, and that's in chapter X, 4 and 5, and we know what happened to them. That was a husband and wife team that decided they would lie about the money that they had made. And then the second Ananias is the Ananias who's covered in our lesson that the Lord is using. And then there was a third Ananias, which is he was a, um, a high priest, and he was, uh, he was evil. But you can find more about him. And he was appointed, I'm sorry, by uh, Herod Agrippa II around A.D. 48. And he has, he played a role in Paul's, um, Paul appeared in Jerusalem before the Sanhedrin Council. And you can find more about him in Acts 23. But our lesson, we're in chapter 9. And let's look at what our book tells us about our lesson for uh, today. This is lesson 12 and our lesson subject or topic is Ananias Hill Saul. The time is AD 32. The place it says on the road between Jerusalem and Dis Damascus and we'll realize what this is as we get into it. Our lesson comes from Acts chapter 9 verse 10 through 20. Now the book uses the scriptures from the new uh from the king james version 
but I'm going to be using the New Living Translation. And our golden text comes from uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 15, and it reads, But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and the king as well as the people of Israel. Now that's our golden text. And then we see we have two outlines, outlines for this lesson. The first role, the first one, the role of Ananias, which is verses 10 through 14. And then the second outline is the commission of Saul, which is verse uh, 15 through 20. Now, as we see that, as I said, when it opens up in our first, uh, so many, the first outline, we're going to see how Ananias is playing a role in this with Saul. But the Lord in our lesson puts emphasis on Ananias because it's Ananias comes into the uh, passage of scripture in this 10th verse. But something happened from verse 1 through uh, number 9. And this is when Saul had his conversion on the Damascus road. Now keep in mind, his name is not Paul yet. He's still Saul. And if you look in our the beginning of Acts 9, this is where uh, Saul was an evil person. He was a young Pharisee, and he, be, he was determined that he was going to exterminate or terminate, exterminate, or kill all those that talked about Jesus Christ, who were believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one day, now he had gotten his letters from the, uh, from the high priest where he needed in writing so he could go to the synagogues and snoop around and look Sister Ridgeway, as if, okay, if anybody get up and say something about Jesus, I can, I can put them in handcuffs and take them back so they can be found guilty. Isn't that amazing how someone will come in, in a meeting place, in a church of all places, and look around to see who they could cut down and uh, bring down. But in this case, Saul had gotten letters to do this. And as he was on his way to Jerusalem, on the Damascus road, the Lord struck Saul down and Saul heard him and he fell to the ground. Then he had nerve to, he said, Lord, what you want me to do? Now, isn't it amazing? He's attacking God's children, but he recognizes the Lord Jesus' voice. He even had nerve to say, what would you have me to do? This is the same man that was going around going to kill you, uh, uh, Sister Irene Taylor, if you even mentioned Jesus' name. He was out to kill you. Now he's telling Jesus, oh, what you want me to do? What, what would you have me to do? In that little time, Saul realized he didn't have the power that he thought he had. And so when he did this, hello, uh, Robert. When he did that, he fell to the ground. I said he was eating dirt, y'all, because he could not... He, he couldn't bear to listen with the type of uh, character that he had and keep his head up high. No, he got low. He, he fell on the ground and he stayed that way until the Lord asked him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And that's when all this took place. And then he told him, the Lord told him, you go uh, take this road and you go into uh, Damascus and you stay there until I send somebody that's gonna help you. When Saul got up, now remember, he didn't travel by himself. He had some more men with him because he was a young Pharisee. He, he had bodyguards, he had, he had what Robert would say, he had some buddies with him. He had some, some road dogs that would go anywhere with him. But in this case, they even heard the voice, but they didn't see nobody. And they were in just amazement. They didn't, they, they, they didn't run off and leave him. That's what real homies do. Am I right, uh, Brother Baldwin? Homies will stick with you. But in this case, when the Lord told him to get up and go, the men had to leave Saul because he had lost his eyesight. And he told him, you go there and you stay three days. This is what the Lord is telling Saul. Now, this is where our lesson picks up. So let's look at our uh, first outline. 
And this is our outline, and it's this is uh, the role of Ananias. This is the Ananias who we're talking about now. It's verse 10. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision. Now remember, this is Jesus is already gone, but he's speaking to Ananias, who this says a believer. In the other book, it says he was a disciple. He was a learner. So he wasn't uh, a full-fledged where he had no authority, now, but he believed and he was learning. Isn't it a wonderful if God can use you if you are just a believer? He says, the Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias, listen, same thing as Saul. He said, yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Taurus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. A persecutor, being converted, praying to the Lord. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. This is now listen, look, listen how Ananias replies back. He said, But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I have heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he authorized, he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest anyone who calls upon your name. Now, Ananias is listening to what the Lord is telling him. But Ananias, uh, uh, Sister Ruby Baldwin, reminds me of me. Lord, wait, you want me to go do what? You want me to go into this place? He said, I heard about this man. This, this, this is a bad man, Lord. I, Ananias never said that he wouldn't go, but he had a little fear because he knew what, what this Saul of Taurus was all about. So the Lord let him know. He told him, he says, go over. The Lord giving him direct directions. He didn't lead him around the block. He didn't tell him to run by the store and get a pack of cereals. He told him exactly where to go. He looked what he says. He says, and the Lord says, go over to Straight Street. Straight Street. Now they said the reason it was called Straight because most of the streets were winding and narrow. Straight Street mean it went straight through the city. So this man, uh, Judah's house was on Straight Street. It's just like me telling uh, Irene, I want you to go on Weaver Road. Don't go around June Street, don't go around Pointer, don't go around Bonita Street, go Weaver, cause Weaver is a straight street. And this is what he's saying, he says, and when you get there, look, the Lord's telling me, ask for a man from Taurus named Saul. When he said Saul, that would have been just Saul, mm-mm, 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 cause everybody had heard of Saul. But that didn't stop them from uh, gathering and learning and spreading the good news about Jesus Christ. But they knew Saul was an enemy of Christ. And he says, guess what? When you get there, Ananias, he going to be praying. Now, can you imagine the Lord send, send uh, rousing the Lord sending you to you to seek out you know is an enemy. And you know this enemy is up to no good. But the Lord is telling you, no, rouse and go. And I'm going to tell you how you'll know who he is, because he's going to be praying. Now, you know, a lot of us would have been like, hmm, something don't sound right. But when the Lord tell you something, you can go to the bank with it. He says, you're going to go there. And he said, the Lord said, and he's praying right now to me. Now you tell me God ain't a right now God when you pray. He already got an answer for you. Right now, I'm still praying God already answered it. He says, I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see. The Lord is telling Ananias what he told Saul in a vision. I'm going to send you a man and his name is Ananias. Now he didn't give no description of how Ananias looked. He just told him, I'm going to, he told Saul, I'm going to send you a man named Ananias. Ananias is going to heal you through me. Not through Ananias, 
because you know, uh, uh, come on, Rosalind. Ananias, if it was me and Rosalind, no, we ain't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. No, we not gonna do it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put no, give her no strength. But when the Lord speaks, Rosalind, guess what? We'll do it because we believe in him and we have enough faith to believe that this man is not, this person not gonna hurt us. And then, look, then they said, the, but the Lord exclaimed to Ananias. In other words, he went to tell him why he wanted him to do this. He says, and, and Ananias is the one explaining to the Lord why, why he don't want to do it. Isn't it amazing how we can, we can tell the Lord why we can't do something? We can explain it and just say, mm-mm, I can't do that. How many, how many choir members will say, I can't leave that song? I don't know. But when they open up their mouth and sing, I think they surprise themselves because the Lord has already given it to you. And then, listen, Ananias. Ananias said, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to believers in Jerusalem. Do y'all see that? Ananias is holding a conversation in this vision with the Lord himself. He says, and he is authorized by the leading priests to arrest anyone who calls upon your name. In other words, uh, Oh, Saul had approval to arrest men and women. He didn't care. He was out to get anybody, anybody that even spoke on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then look at verse, um, what verse 14, this is the Lord talking back to Ananias. I just love when the Lord will answer you and answer you where you can understand and he'll make it clear for you and he'll remove all doubt and fear that you might have. But the Lord said, Go for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings as well as to the people of Israel. Now the Lord is telling him, no, I've chosen him. You don't have to be afraid of him. Hello, Sister Clark. You don't have to be scared of Saul. I've chosen Saul. Charles, uh, Saul has been changed. I've changed Saul. Go on and do what I tell you to do. You don't have to fear him because I'm with you and I'm with Saul. And then in verse 16 where it says, um, and uh, that was verse 15, he told him to go head on. And then he, 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 he had to uh, let Ananias know, don't fear him because I got a job for Saul to do. Now Ananias could have been like some of us. Well, Lord, I can do it. Let me do it. I can do it. No, you got your job. I've got my job. And when God has assigned us to do a specific job, he is with us. He never leaves us alone. Now, you, he might step aside when you run around not following his instruction, but he's never, he will never give you instructions or a job to do and you don't follow it. And this is what Ananias was concerned about because Ananias didn't, Ananias didn't want to go with him. And I don't blame Ananias. I don't want to go with the, with the with the with the people I know that are out to get me but if God tells me to go and take a message to them guess what I'm going and I'm not going to be afraid I'm not going to be afraid of them I'm going to move on because God is with me now let's see what time it is we're doing good let's look at our next outline now we get into this one it says the commission of the commission of Saul and this is coming from verse 15 through 20. Now, listen at this. He's still talking to Ananias. See, Ananias is the main character in this story. He says, but the Lord said, go for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the king as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my sake, and I will show him how much he must so suffer for my name's sake. Do y'all see that? Guess what? Ananias got right on up. And then verse 17 says, So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that I might, so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterwards, he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. And immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue saying, he is indeed the son of God. Now, now it we're still looking at what the Lord has uh, told Ananias to do because he's already let uh, Saul know that I'm gonna send you somebody that's gonna help you. Now you think about it, hello Mia, the Lord sending somebody to help you who was afraid of you, but now who's in charge now? Who's got the power? So as we see that the Lord gave Ananias reason why he wanted him to go and uh, minister to Saul because he let him know. He let Ananias know that uh, Saul going to do some work for me. Saul is going to, uh, he's going to, uh, He's, go, he's joining our side, uh, Roslyn. He's, he's not against us no more. He's joining up with us. And But keep in mind that the Lord is letting Ananias know this because uh, Saul had a threefold ministry. One, the Lord um, declared that Saul was his chosen vessel, that he chose Saul to do this. Number two, Saul was to bear Jesus' name to the kings. Remember, Saul was a young Pharisee, so he could go in and out where the highest uh, authority of people could would be. So the Lord is using him for that. And three, he called him, he is to carry the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. This same man that was going out to destroy everybody, the Lord is reversing these roles do y'all hear me? He's reversing Saul's role. And I'm sure it's a lot of more people that were afraid of Saul. And then with, for this to happen, Saul is now, y'all, he, he's been in this man's house for three days. He's been in this man's house. He can't see. It don't, I don't know, was it scales like fish scales on his eyes? But he couldn't see. It's nothing like losing your eyesight. I heard one man say one time, he'd rather lose his arms and legs than lose his eyesight. So in this case, Saul, Saul was so obedient and had been, what we used to say, Robert, the Lord brought him down a couple of notches. So anytime you get so high up and you think you all of that, God will bring you down. And when God bring you down, it will take him to lift you back up. And as we see, when he, when he let Ananias know the purpose of him going. Now, Ananias was not a seasoned disciple. He was a learning disciple. He, was, he believed and he carried that with him. So the Lord chose somebody that, Ananias, that Saul wouldn't have expected to see anyway, but the Lord told him that I'm going to send Ananias. And then as we see in that, in that 15th verse, how the Lord let Ananias know, this is why I'm sending you. And then look what he says, and I will, verse 16, and I will show him how much he must suffer. That let me know. He said, suffer for my sake. Now he caused suffering on people that believed in Jesus Christ. Now the Lord is saying, okay, Saul, you gonna suffer now, but you gonna suffer for my name, not because you wanna take my name away from people, but you gonna see what it's like to suffer for my name as of being Jesus, the Son of God. Do you know that's something that we have to realize? We're going to have some suffering days. We're going to have some down days. Am I right, Pam? We, we lived and when we're young, we vibrant, we think we can move heaven and earth, and we're going to be like that for the rest of our life. No, there's some suffering coming because you know what? We've got to give an account of our sins. There's no waiting till we die to pay for our sins. No, there's some things we gonna have to give an account for right here and that will cause suffering upon us. But that don't mean it's over. And then as we see in verse 16, the Lord told Ananias that Saul would know what it was like to suffer for Jesus' name. Now he's gonna, Ananias gonna have the real picture what it meant for true believers to suffer for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So look at verse 17 
way it says. So now Ananias didn't he didn't he didn't try to back out of it. He didn't try to make a, a excuse. Ananias, so Ananias went and he found Saul. Now he must have knew who Judas was because he went straight to his house. He said, and guess what? When he got there, Ananias did exactly what the Lord said. He laid his hand on him and said, listen at this, this is the enemy. This is the enemy, Sister Ridgeway. Now Ananias is calling that person that's stabbing me in the back. All of a sudden, he said, Brother Saul. He's calling him brother. God will make your enemies your footstool. And guess what? We are calling brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord who appeared to you on the road has sent me that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And instantly scales fell from Saul's eye. You know why? Because Saul believed. And Elias didn't go there and covered his face like this. No. And Ananias went there and he laid hands on him. It wasn't like, you know, who was that when the man that couldn't see and Jesus spat on the ground and made a little clay and put it on his eyes and told him, go wash. In this case, he all Ananias did, he laid his hands on him. He was obedient to God. Saul didn't get his eyesight because of Ananias. Saul got his eyesight through the working of the Lord Jesus Christ through Ananias. And then he says, he says, and then he gained his sight and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So he had to be filled with the Holy Spirit before he could start his ministry. Because look, when he got his sight, he said it was like scales that fell off his eyes. And I'm thinking, he was, he was blind. He couldn't see. It didn't say that he he, his eyesight was gone. See, my eyesight is failing, but I got these spectacles to help me to see better. But in this case, this man was seeing and doing everything, but on that Damascus road, he couldn't see nothing. And I, Elaine, I'm thinking when he fell to the ground, he had dirt on his face and the Lord just left that dirt there. So his eyes, so he couldn't blink and flash because he couldn't see. And then he says, look, he says, and that he might gain his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know how he got the Holy Spirit within him? Because he believed, he didn't doubt. Saul was happy, he said, and instantly, like scales fell from his eyes. So in other words, that, that all that blindness, all that darkness went away and he regained his sight. Then look what he did. He didn't walk around on the floor. Sister Cummins, he didn't go around and, and just lay around and think, ooh, I can see. Ooh, that show look good over there. No, Saul, he got up. Y'all see that? That he was, he got up. He was baptized. All this was Ananias. He was baptized. And then they say he ate. See, he hadn't eaten for three days. Come on, Brother uh, Baldwin and Brother Clint. Can you go without three days of eating? Not too many of us. Not too many of us. We... We live large and we eat large. But in this case, Saul hadn't eaten. But when he received his sight, he was like that, that, that eunuch in the, in, the, in the buggy talking and reading the scripture. And somebody run along and ask him, do you know what you read? He say, how can I unless somebody teach me? Then he wanted to be baptized. So he said, well, that goes some water. Baptize me. In this case, Saul was baptized. And afterwards, he ate some food and regained his strength. And then look. And then our last uh, uh, verse uh, 20, it says, and he stayed with the believers. Saul didn't get this and then run off to start his own ministry. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. He stayed with some practicing believers because, see, he had to learn also. He, thank you, Rob. He had to learn also and see how to operate under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He couldn't run off and say, okay, the Lord called me to preach. I don't need nobody to teach me. I don't need to be, you know, I'm going to start me a church. No, that's not how it works. Everybody needs to be taught and learn and, 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 and go through a process of learning and how to uh, handle things. And then he says, he stayed with the believers in Damascus a few days. And immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue and saying, he is indeed the Son of God. He did not run out there and decide, I'm going to go to this church and I'm going to take some people from over here and I'm going to convince some over there and come go with me. And I'm going to, no, Saul was smart 
well educated and he knew he wanted to learn more about this Jesus Christ from the inside not like he was on the outside just wanting to crucify people because they talked about Jesus no Saul wanted to he was a converted he was converted to become a believer and follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and that's what we we are converted we ought to stand with the Lord and to show others that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, that does not mean that we won't make mistakes. Don't get, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. You will make mistakes. But we know how to go back and, come, like my mama would say, come to yourself and fix yourself up and get up and, and do what's right. Don't wallow there. So Saul was, he was Saul, as we know. If we look a little further, I think it's going to be down around about a few more chapters where he, his name is going to be changed from Saul to Paul. And Paul is one of the greatest writers of the New Testament because Saul, Paul had a thorn in his side. But remember, the Lord told Ananias, he's going to have to suffer. It didn't, it, that does not mean God does not love you because you suffer. No, your suffering is to make you stronger and keep your faith stronger. And that's what our lesson is about. Saul was converted. He got his sight back and he was baptized. And guess what he did? He carried it on. He did not just decide to break out on his own and do things. We all need to learn because this is a learning process. We're having, we haven't arrived yet, but the Lord is with us. And guess what? He loves us and he expects us to do great things with carrying his word to the people. And if you let me read this little conclusion, Anna and I obeyed the Lord and saw the great blessing that resulted. The church Persecutor, y'all see that? The church persecutor Saul had been converted and was now a chosen vessel for the Lord. Saul, or Paul, as he would become later in Acts 13, I said that, had a unique gift and experience that made him an effective missionary for Christ, an effective missionary for Christ. But our text reminds us that experiences that made him an effective missionary for Christ. He says, Paul, like us, was merely a vessel. We're a vessel. We don't, we don't have no power. The power is God using this vessel. A vessel by itself does not have much value. Only when it is filled does it serve a purpose. Y'all see that? Like this great apostle, we must submit to the Lord and follow him to fill us with the power, wisdom, and ability to serve him. It might be like uh, Ananias. God will call one of us to witness to a certain person. It may be a little much, or it may be little or much will come of it. But what really matters is that we hear and respond to God's call. The actual spiritual uh, spiritual results and glory for these results are his words, his works, not ours. Amen. And I pray and hope that this lesson has been a benefit and that it will help you with your daily walk. And I want to thank all of you all for tuning in and listening to me. Uh, a unknown person to come and share this message with you because I was really surprised that the lesson wasn't merely about Saul but it was about Ananias doing what the Lord told him so again I want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, and may you be blessed and God keep you safe and that we'll see each other again on the next occasion and good evening.